My name is Ken Clark and I'm here at L.W. Young Junior High School. I'm a part of a seminar that discusses making the correct choices. I'm here to encourage students, in particular seventh graders, uh, to make the right choices. And with choices, there are rewards for correct choices and negative choices, there are consequences. Learning L.W. Young High School. Sorry. Junior High School. Eagles. Fitting me. Now today my theme will be wrapped around the topic choices and consequences. So we're going to learn a new word today. Raise up hands anyone ever heard of the word endurance. We're going to dig deeper into that word for the ones that didn't raise their hand. Today's discussion, learn how to struggle, develop endurance. The Merriam-Webster definition of endurance is the ability to withstand hardship and adversity. Oxford definition of endurance is the ability to endure unpleasant or difficult process or situation without giving way. Now it seems that endurance might be something you run away from. It's unpleasant, it's difficult, it's very hard. No one wants to feel unpleasant, no one likes difficulties. We rather the easy way out. But I'm here to tell you to embrace the Bible book in James chapter 1 and verse 4, the Christian Standard Version says, And let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking nothing. What does that mean? Well, it means that endurance should be allowed to have its full effect or work complete by letting the trial run its full course without any attempts to use unscriptural, unlawful or impractical means to bring it to a swift end. You have to let your tested trial be complete or run its full course. You cannot cut it short. Because after you are tested with hardship by letting your trials complete itself without giving up, you will acquire the quality of endurance. You will also find that faith and persistence goes hand in hand with endurance. In order to succeed with these qualities, you must have goals, determination, guidance. Well, students of LW Young, you already have a platform for that guidance. Your teachers are your guide. I love to share this example of an American author and radio personnel, Earl Nightingale who discusses the importance of being guided. He illustrates two ships in a harbor. The first ship has no captain, has no crew, no destination, no guidance. The second ship, sorry, the second ship has a captain, has a crew, has a destination, has guidance. Question to you, which ship is most likely to sink? What, what was the first one? You, you sang? What was the first one? Who said it? You? What was the first example? Exactly. That's the... I can't remember. <laughs> but seriously, the ship with no captain, no destination, no crew, is most likely the ship that will sink. Similarly, your teachers guide you in finding your academic path that suits you as individuals. In turn, with your determination to learn, you will arrive to your destination to academic achievement. Now with some understanding of what endurance is, how vital it is for you to develop that quality, does it come easy for you to rebel against the discipline of your teachers, your parents, 
students, are you being pressured? Or has all of your motivation for everything been sapped because of the death of a close family member? However, once again, endurance is essential. We are going to answer three questions that will help you to apply the quality of endurance in your life. Now, students, I want you to take a mental note. For those who have pens and paper, you can could, you could write it down. Because at the end of this discussion, I will recap these same three questions on these qualities that you need to, to, to have. The questions are, number one. How can you endure trials successfully? Question two. How to have a positive view of trials and hardship? And question three. How is endurance rewarding? First, let's take a look at how you can endure trials successfully. Now, after reviewing many examples of success after hardship, one thing stood out that made it possible to succeed. With each example, there was a sense of purpose. What is your sense of purpose? You need to have positive goals that you can put all of your focuses on. Remember, to accomplish anything worthwhile in life takes time. And now is the best time for you to start working on positive goals. But here's the difficult part. You will have obstacles and challenges. Now, how many students that represents LWM Eagles love sports? I see more boys. I see more boys. Ah, it's like equal girls go into sports as well. <laughs> Do you like basketball? Do you like track and field? What about swimming? How many of you can swim? That's good. That's very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Now, do you agree with me that to become an athlete, you need to sacrifice hours? of intense training and hard work? Yeah. To become an athlete, you need to train your body to be to subject to the conditions and the strengths of your muscles. I'll read an article for you. The article, The Importance of Muscular Strength in Athletic Performance, concludes, and I read, quote, that stronger athletes regularly perform better than weaker athletes of a similar skill level. Greater muscular strength were connected to improving in sports-specific um, skills. Skills such as sprinting, jumping, change of direction, and endurance performance. Additional benefits were also shown in lower rates of injuries in stronger athletes. End quote. In order to achieve this as an athlete, you need inner strength or a sense of purpose, the love for the sport, the willingness to win and never give up to help you to your final goal. Without strength inside of yourself, you cannot succeed outside of yourself. You cannot risk your life swimming great distances if you haven't put in the time and the hard work to train your muscles for the obstacles and the challenges of swimming. Let's take a look at the second question. How to have a positive view of trials and hardship. April 6, 1994, in the country of Rwanda, the president has just been murdered. Two dominant tribes, the Hutu and the Tutsis, for many years had created tension between them. Just a side note. Now, even though they are of different tribes, 
they are all Rwandans, just how you are all um, Bohemians. They are from the same country and share the same land. Within 100 days after the death of the president, it was estimated that the Hutu were responsible for taking the lives of one million Tutsis. It this also left about 400,000 children without fathers and mothers. I want to share with you a story of a Tutsi survivor, and let's look deep into her trials and hardship and how she maintained a positive view. Here is the story of Claudine. Claudine was living with her parents at the time. She had 10 brothers and one sister. She describes her family as a happy family. She was 20 years old when a Hutu militia burst through her door and took the lives of her entire family. They kept her alive only for the purpose of their amusement to see her suffer. She said that she was abused so many times that it made her numb. She went on to explain that when the war had ended, her life was empty. There was nothing to live for. She wanted to die. Rather, she wanted to kill herself. How was Claudine prepared to deal with these trials and hardships? surviving the humiliating experiences of being abused and the loss of her entire family. She found the purpose with the view to look at her trials positively. She found this group in a village, a trauma program for the purposes of bringing the two survivors and the perpetrators together to gain insight on how to manage the loss of loved ones and to let her anger go. She loved the program so much that she dedicated her life to helping others to move forward and rebuild the lives together, avoiding the risk of conflict. She didn't hold within her hatred because hatred was done to her. Instead, she rebuilds love within her community. This positive view of her trials helps her to endure. Let's look at the third question. How is endurance rewarded. Well, I myself was faced with hardship in 2004 when I was found guilty and sentenced to three years in prison for an unlicensed firearms charge. My tested trial was that of mental and physical hardship. Now in prison, surrounded by criminal influences, the question is, how will I deal with the challenges ahead? One, I could shape my thinking to that of the prison environment, or two, I could develop the skills to protect my mental structure, not to be influenced. Now, whichever decision I made, I had three years to develop and shape my way of thought. Well, I decided not to be influenced. By the time I went to prison, I was not a big fan of reading books, but it was very difficult finding a positive outlet in prison. So books were my only way out of not contaminating my mind. I, I read books. Books that inspire, books that motivate. I even read the entire Bible each year of my sentence, and I grew in knowledge and understanding. I was so motivated by books that it started to shape my way of thought and my life in prison for positive change. I became recognized by my outstanding behavior by the heads of prison, and I gained their trust. I gained their trust so much that I was awarded the privilege to walk around the prison unsupervised. This trust builds to more trust, and with nine months left in my prison sentence, I was granted the privilege to leave the prison grounds for employment. Now, when my prison sentence came to an end, I found employment as a line staff to an established business. I used my liking for reading books and studied computers, passed various computer-related examinations, and got hired and promoted by this same company to be the head of their computer department. 
each one of you, each person, each student would face their own unique difficulties and challenges. That was my challenge. I let my challenge at the time complete it itself and develop the quality of endurance. I benefited greatly as a computer technician to implementing network infrastructures. And now, today, as a public speaker, sharing my experiences with you. I urge you to embrace difficulties. Most successful victories come after hardship. If you don't have a struggle, make a struggle. If you are struggling now, stay the course, be tested, and, do, and let that hardship produce the quality of endurance. Now let's wrap up this discussion by recapping the three questions. We will also go over the answers given for each question that corresponds with each example in the discussion. Now this is where your participation comes in. Memory retention. The first question, what was it? <laughs> Take a stop. Stand up. No, 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 she could. That's, that's very, very, very good. I commend you for that. How can you have positive views? Very good and excellent. That's excellent that you took that stop. That is the question, but that's the second question. Let me help you out with the first question. Anybody else want to take a shot? That's very commendable. Okay. The first question was how you can endure trials successfully. The endurance of trials was similar, remember, to that of an athlete. First having a sense of purpose. This sense of purpose comes with an inner desire to achieve a worthwhile goal. Once this is, once this is desired, he has to then overcome the difficult obstacles and challenges associated with the intense training of the physical body. Back to now the second question. The young student was correct. How to have a positive view of trials and hardship? We shared the story in this discussion of Claudine, who lost her entire family and was abused in her time of conflict in her country. She gained a positive view of her trials by joining a group that taught her how to love and forgive. Now she finds comforts in teaching others how to love and forgive. Anyone of the students of the Eagles want to take a shot at what the third and final question was? Oh man, the female students are on top of you guys. Go ahead, Sana. Oh, that is excellent. Could you give the young students That's very good, and you, you, don't have, you don't have a note, that's good. Yes, the final question is, how is endurance rewarded? Now, we took a look, a look into my own personal struggles in prison and the fight not to be influenced by deep-rooted criminal influences in prison. With finding my love for reading in prison, I read my way to a rewarding career in information technology. Now having the joy to share my experiences by my voice. I urge you again to learn how to struggle, develop endurance, and all of this is a part of your choices and consequences. Good morning. Good morning. The presentation that I gave was enduring hardships and how to have a positive view on hardships. I encourage all the students that I spoke with today um, to make the right choices because with choices, like I said, it comes consequences or rewards. I give some examples of my experiences and the experience of others, the ones that made right choices and the ones that didn't. Um, 
it seemed to be very encouraging to the students, the staff, um, the Ministry of Education for being here, and um, had a wonderful morning. Thank you.